lighting designer. I focus mostly in theatrical. I've done a little bit of architectural and I am also a professor uh, and teach lighting design. I came into the world of theater by um, being an actor initially in like junior high and high school. I took jobs in every part of uh, theater to just to learn about it and to be around it. And I was running a fall spot on a production and uh, there was a moment at the end of a show where there was a key change and the actors all turned towards the audience and there was a build in the backlight and I watched that moment wash over the entire audience and I was blown away. I, I was like, I want to make people feel that. That is uh, what I want to be a part of. I did a little research on where I wanted to go and I decided to go to um, SUNY Purchase and I studied under uh, Bill Mincer and Brian McDevitt at Purchase. When I left school, I actually went right into Brian's studio and I uh, worked with him for many years uh, as his assistant and then eventually as lead associate. Um, and uh, all the while, he was kind of pushing me to build my own career. In the last few years, I have uh, engaged with um, a company that uh, we've design shows for cruise ships, so I've been doing a lot of that, um, which kind of mix the uh, the theatrical with a lot of the technical background, um, which is really fun. Uh, and then I'm still doing a lot of theater pieces, and I'll, I've been uh, spending the last few summers doing uh, these shows at the Muni Theater in St. Louis, uh, which is really exciting because it's an 11,000 seat outdoor venue, and you do these really, really huge, large-scale shows very quickly. Um, you know, we, we basically have like 12 days to put on a full-scale musical. Um, and that's for everybody. That's all the designers, that's the, the cast. Everybody basically shows up on day one, and on day 12 we have a show. Um, so it's, it's pretty wild. Beyond that, I'm also the artistic director of the um, Bukowski Bridge of Lights in Shreveport, Louisiana, where I was brought into around this bridge that we lit and we built an educational residency where we teach uh, Title I students about design and about careers in design. The goal is to impress on them that their voices are important and that they can use those voices on the symbol of the city. Um, so we teach them how to create the light shows and then they can be commissioned to create um, either art or designs for causes on the bridge, which is really, really cool. Um, well, it, you know, it, it's kind of innate in the fact that we've gone into this world of LED where we're already, you know, in, in a place where we are obviously saving electricity, saving power based on that. But there's also, because of that, it kind of makes you think about that in a broader scale too. We, we have a lot of discussions and it's come up a, a couple of times during some of the sessions about also how our work affects the environment around us. I now live in Charleston, South Carolina, and there is a bridge there that I, I feel like and other people around feel like that like really needs to be lit. Um, it's, the, it's a beautiful bridge. It is uh, an engineering marvel. It really is the symbol of the city right now. I mean, it's on like the logos of all of the, the companies around the, the area. Um, and the reason why it hasn't been is because we have a large sea turtle population. And so that is a big focus in that whole area is like, okay, how do we approach our design and how do we approach even our living while being sensitive to that? So it's, it's just like it kind of the, the, the layers of it have kind of awoken in me, stuff that I didn't really think I would ever have to think about or things that are now constantly on my mind. I think AI is potentially really powerful and it, I talked before about how, you know, we, we're always having a lot of conversations about philosophically, you know, what we should think of in terms of using it responsibly, how uh, uptight we should get about what that responsibility is. My concern sits in the world of, as an artist who is worried about intellectual property, I want to make sure that we're not crossing lines there, but at the same time, Design in general is kind of derivative at its source. We're, we're always pulling from things we experience, things we know, things we've seen. So where that line is drawn, I think gets a little weird. Um, but uh, um, 
but I, I think that there is a, a real powerful case for uh, how it can be used in our in our world.